Hold it. I think you're going to like this picture. Love That Bob. Starring Bob Cummings. much for working so late. See, you must be tired and hungry, hmm? Yes, I'm going right in to fix the steaming bark coming on Boston. Oh, boy, that sounds sensational. It is? Yeah. You know, come think of it, I'm, I'm a little tired and hungry myself. <laughs> I'm sure you are. <laughs> well, uh, aren't you going to uh, invite me to join you? Player. You know, Chuck's got three of those. Oh, it's the sleep teach outfit. That's right, Margaret. Uh, each evening from now on, I'm going to spend my time listening to these records. Don't tell me they have electrical outlets up on Mulholland. <laughs> oh, Margaret, you're really a kick. I am, I am. Looks like you're starting with languages, huh? Yeah. Well, I, I feel that as the world grows smaller, it's more and more important that we Americans become multilingual. Oh, viva la lingua. <laughs> yeah. Well, as long as we're near the border, I suppose we'll start with Spanish, huh? Well, no, I hadn't, I hadn't thought I would... French is beautiful. Yeah, it, it, it's a nice... They say German is the language of Europe. Yeah, possibly. How about Italian? No, no, Mark, I wouldn't have any reason... Well, that only leaves Danish, Dutch, Swedish, and Norwegian. No, there, there's a great suggestion. Norwegian? <laughs> no, Swedish. Oh, now, why would you want to learn Swedish? Yeah. Well, see, I'm a photographer, and uh, the Swedes of late have been turning out some beautiful uh, cameras. So have the Germans. Well, it just so happens, Margaret, that I'm interested in the Swedish-built uh, product. I understand they're pretty well-built products. <laughs> yeah. Now, look, you take the Hasselblad with the 3.5 lens. Or the Ingrid Goo with the 3.6 sweater. <laughs> Margaret, why is it that you insist upon reading some ulterior motive into everything worthwhile I have? Worthwhile? Yes, worthwhile. You're trying to make time with Ingrid, and you know it. Well, if that isn't worthwhile, I'd like to know what is. Jag älskar dig. I love you. Jag älskar dig mycket. I love you very much. Attention, now you will learn to speak German. Ich liebe dich. I love you. Wie geht es Ihnen heute Morgen? How are you this morning? Sehr gut. Yes, Margaret, it is I. Living stone for Schultz. As we used to say at the basketball court. Well, you seem happy. Oh, I'm in rousing good spirits today. And I warn you, Margaret, I may get off a quip at the slightest provocation. <laughs> well, I'll be on my guard. Where is uh, Schulte? Technically, she's on a coffee break. Actually, I'm standing by while she attends the opening of a simply fabulous sale. Well, how nice of you. Not really. I'm the one who told her about the sale. Well, won't everything be all picked over by the time you get there? The item my master will be here. Oh, could the item by any chance be my kiss and kin? I'll kiss him if I kin. Lord, <laughs> you're 
sugar guard didn't do it. <laughs> All the way. <laughs> but <laughs> I think it's only fair to warn you that Bob is interested in only one girl right now. And who might that be? Well, who else? Miss Sweden. No, that's in good good. She's in the dressing room now preparing to pose. Well, you don't seem worried. Oh, Ingrid has a certain fresh Nordic charm. <laughs> but there's something she hasn't got that I have. Where? Oh, <laughs> Determination. The will to win. Ad Astra per Aspera. I, uh, I'm sorry, my Latin's a little... To the stars, through difficulties. The motto of my native state, Kansas. Oh, I didn't know you were from Kansas. Dodge City. We're a rugged, adventurous people, we Dodge City living stones. Did you know that my grandmother rode all the way to California on horseback? Well, I guess a lot of women had to do that back in the pioneer days. This was last week. <laughs> to the shipping, to the Dodge City paper. Well, she did it on a dare. <laughs> Prove that the spirit of the pioneer woman is still alive. For the heritage like that, Margaret, you can see why I do not flinch in the face of a little competition. Hey. Oh, oh, hi, hi Ingrid. Ingrid. How are you? How are you? <laughs> oh, ho. <laughs> so that's to be your game. A display of physical charms. <laughs> I warn you, Ingrid, there is more than one bathing suit in that dressing room. I will match you. Charm for charm. <laughs> you have challenged for Sweden. I will defend for America. <laughs> Don't worry about Pamela, Ingrid. She's really on Sweden's side. You wait in the studio for Bob. He has a surprise for you, and I have one for him. Well, she ought to be barred from the street, that's what. I haven't... Who should? Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, nothing. Some little old lady ran through a red light. Darnest thing I ever saw. Oh, this is Hollywood. You've seen little old ladies go through red lights before? Uh, I... On horseback? Oh, <laughs> grandmother. Who? Uh, nothing. Ingrid's waiting for you in the studio. Oh, really? Oh, well, that's wonderful, Margaret. Well, there won't be any language barrier between us now. Oh, the sleep teaching. That's right. Ten hours of concentrated instruction tucked away in this little old subconscious. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait she finds out that I've learned Swedish. Just wait till you find out I switched the record. <laughs> Good morning. Say it in Swedish. But you don't understand Swedish. I studied all night so I could talk to my favorite girl in my favorite language. How nice. Now, go, go ahead. Just say something. Is that a chili dog? <laughs> Was that Swedish? Yes. Well, what'd you say? I said, how are you this morning? Oh, um, sehr gut, mein schöner Fräulein. Monsieur and the Freud. That is German. Boy, sure sounds like it, doesn't it? <laughs> Your favorite girl is German. No, no, she isn't, honey. Then why do you study the language on that? Look, you be I I, I, mm. I have a <laughs> Well, I wish I had an answer for that. <laughs> Margaret, goodbye, Schultz. What's your hurry? I want to get to a neutral port before Herr Brother finds out who torpedoed his love boat. You know, Margaret, I don't get it. If I hang around, I will. I'll be the same. No, no, look, just say something else in Swedish, honey. Yeah, right, the king of shit, sir. I, yeah. Now, what does that mean? You're a fickle wolf. Now, wait a minute. Uh, nine. Ich liebe dich. Oh, nuts. <laughs> Look, can't you speak German? Jawohl, mein Herr. Oh, that's better. Come see Herr. Backen! Look, Hamilton. Wait a minute. No, nein. Er, verboten. Help! <laughs> Thank you. 
Mom, I didn't get a chance to tell you about that double feature we saw last night. Two science fiction thrillers. The Ant That Ate the World, and I Was a Teenage Moon Monster. Not those and horror it... films again. Horror? What do you mean, horror? These were terrific. This great big ant. Oh, you please, see it, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, well, in the second one, this teenager turned into a monster. The most horrible thing. How could thing. they tell when they... it happened? Well, well they used to kind of go test. No, oh, Mom. <laughs> The way it starts, these teenagers are driving across Florida, you see, and they find this old kind of kind of beat up rocket ship that the scientists couldn't get to fly. So they strip it down, soup it up, and take off for the moon. Please, so I they... don't want to hear it. It scares me. Yeah, well, I'll leave out the scary part. A anyway, they land on the moon, and right away their rocket ship is attacked by these huge man-eating cockroaches. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hi, Miss Schultz. Hey, hey, I was just telling Mom about this wonderful picture we saw last night where yes, the teenagers yeah. take over the moon. Y you see, when they get there, it's populated by these giant cockroaches that have death ray eyes and poisonous jaws. Oh, yeah. So anyway, they... What? Cockroach, yeah. They, they leave and go to another planet. What? No, 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 not, not the teenagers. The cockroaches leave. Oh, yeah, you see what I mean? And you, you go see us at the front door. Huh? But I want to finish telling Miss Schultz about the cockroaches. Thanks a lot. I, I know. know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, Schultz, you were saved by the bell. Yeah. <laughs> Look, what happened after I left? She did? Oh, wonderful. Oh, I'll bet Bob was fit to... Here it comes. No, 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 don't hang up. I may need your help. Uh, so then you sift in a cup of airy-fairy flour, stir well, and drop on a cookie sheet. Margaret. Yeah, uh, Bob loves these cookies in chocolate milk. You're the cookie I want to see. Uh, just a minute, I'll be true. Listen to me, Margaret. Listen, I think Chuck wants to talk to you, Bob. Excuse me. In the living room. It's urgent. Don't go away. <laughs> oh, Chuck. oh, hi, Uncle Bob. Bob. Hi, Carol. Hey, Uncle Bob, have you seen that picture about the teenagers taking over the moon? No, but it's a good idea. And when you go, take your mother with you. <laughs> you know, your friend Bill Lear was technical advisor on the rocket stuff. If, yeah. And you can take him along, too. You must have been technical advisor on the love scene. Oh, yeah. They were the swing. Look, is this all you wanted to talk to me? Cat told this chick he was taken off for the moon. I mean, she really flipped. She was all shook up? Yeah, because she figured she'd never see him again. I have business with your mother. And before that, she wouldn't Chuck. give him the time of the well, day. Well, he was I... really getting the ice from Yeah, but when he started with that outer space jazz. The chick crumbled. Flip steady. She got down on her knees, and she pleaded. She said, I'm sorry I was mean to you. Don't go to the moon, you brave, crazy kid. I'm sorry I was mean to you. Don't go to the moon, you brave, crazy kid. <laughs> oh, it's the coolest, Uncle Bob. What? Oh, yeah, it, it is, it is, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll see you kids later. Oh, are you going to the movies? No, I'm going to the moon. <laughs> Oh, Miss Good, hello. Uh, I'm Bill Lear. We met at Bob's Christmas party. Oh, oh yes, you're the scientist. Yes, part of the time. And what is that? Well, this, uh, this is a scale model of a rocket that we hope will reach the moon. Oh, how exciting. Uh, Bob called, said he wanted to talk about it. Is he in the studio? No, not yet. I'm waiting, too. He said he needed me for retakes. Well, as long as we're both waiting. You know, I, uh, I've spent considerable time in your wonderful country. Oh, Krakatisvenska. <laughs> Zulita gone. <laughs> that was on him, Link, Danny, of Krakatisvenska. Well, Jaffi Stewart. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I'm so sorry to kept you. Uh, oh, is this the rock? Or, I mean, uh, Ingrid, do you mind if I speak to Bill first? It's very urgent and, and top secret. What's this, no, uh, please, what's this please, all Bill, about? Not, not in front of Ingrid. Well, she's from a neutral country. I know, but it might frighten you. <laughs> Excuse me, Ingrid. Oh, Bob. Thank you very much for coming, Bill. You you never let me down. Well, of course. No, th this is the one that you think will reach the moon, huh? Well, that's our hope, Bob. You see, this is a multiple stage rocket using a new propellant, which should give it a thrust here to four inches. However, the problems facing us are unbelievably complex. Oh yeah, I, I can see that, Bill. Well, you scientists have certainly done your part, all right. From now on, Bill, old man, I'll take over. What do you mean, Bob? Well, you're going to need someone to get her up there for you. 
You don't mean you're volunteering to go to the moon. Bill, for heaven's sake, please. Ingrid might hear you. How do we close this window? <laughs> you can't be serious. You might not get back. What'd you say, Bill? It's dangerous. There's a good chance you might not get back. Well, after all, who have I got to come back to? Don't tell me you've dated all the girls on Earth. <laughs> on me. Try to speak back when my back was turned. Shh. Mr. Collins is going to the moon in a rocket. Moon in a rocket? He's in there now, speaking to the famous scientist, Mr. Lear. Then with its uh, fuel supply exhausted, uh -huh. the first stage drops away, and the second stage propellant takes over. During this phase, we should reach a velocity of about uh, 20,000 miles per hour. Golly. Sufficient to attain a distance from the Earth of approximately... Bill, excuse me, uh, could I look at this in the light for just a minute, please? Yes, but Bob, now the third and most critical stage takes over. You know, I just thought of something. Hmm? We can go over all this technical data later. Right now, I have a lovely lady waiting for retakes. You mean you're going on with business as usual? What a man. <laughs> well, Bill, I see no reason to make a fuss about this. After all, I volunteered for dangerous assignments before, you know. Well, I must say you're uniquely qualified for this one. A single man with no responsibilities, Air Force Reserve, jet training, photographer, working knowledge of meteorology, and plenty of courage. <laughs> now, Bill, let's not talk about my courage. <laughs> you know, I, I must get back to General Tolman with this news. <laughs> no, Bill, now look, I, I don't want any publicity on this. You see, I, I'm doing it purely for science. Bob, I have to tell General Tolman he's rocket coordinator for this district. You do, huh? Bob, this is a side of you that I never knew existed. Oh. Well, I guess there's a little good and even the worst of us, Bill. <laughs> Mr. Lear. Yes? We couldn't help overhearing. Is Mr. Collins really going to the moon? Yes, he's volunteered. I think General Tallman will accept. Oh, what a brave man. The bravest. I like grandmother. <laughs> Hello, General Tallman. Uh, uh, this is Colonel Collins, 164th Fighter Interceptor Wing, Van Ice. Yes, sir. All fine. Just fine, sir. Uh, General, uh, Bill Lear was just over to see... Oh, yes, he is. He's, he's brilliant. Just brilliant. Yes. Uh, General, I, I think, though, that he's been working a little too hard of late. Well... He has some sort of wild hallucination that I'm just dying to go to the moon in a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it is ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> oh, no, 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 sir. Oh, no, no, I, I think it's just a little fatigue. Mm-hmm. I, I think just a, a rest is, is probably all he needs. Uh-huh. Come here. Yes? This trip to the moon will be a great pioneering achievement, won't it? Yes, it will, the greatest. Will Mr. Collins be alone on the moon? Well, unless someone volunteers to go with him, that isn't likely. Sit down. Up. <laughs> oh, Ingrid, I'm so sorry to kept you waiting, honey. Please forgive me. You're going to the moon, and you worry about me. Oh, Ingrid, you heard. <laughs> Mr. Collins, think it over. It is so dangerous. Something terrible could happen to you. Oh, oh, oh now, Ingrid. <laughs> Ingrid, fortunately for science, fortunately, I'm, I'm all alone in this world. And there's no one who, who cares. Oh, you're wrong. There is someone who cares very much. Really? Who? Your sister. <laughs> oh, oh, her, yeah. And your nephew. Oh, him. <laughs> Ingrid, honey, what about you? I will miss you, too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Ingrid, I, I just must be honest with you. 
it, it's not easy facing the unknown. All alone in that dark, mysterious void. I, I only wish that I had some memories to take with me. Many memories. Yeah, but none that would keep me warm on the cold, bleak surface of the moon. Oh, with all these beautiful girls to remember? My darling, when the chips are really down, a man thinks about the things he's missed. Um, there is something you have missed. There's something I missed. Yes, Ingrid. I've missed the simple but real pleasures of this earth. A lovely girl cooking dinner just for me. Or sitting by her fireplace, reading fine poetry. Or just gazing into the fire, intoxicated by the sweet scent of her hair and the smoothness of her cheek. These are the memories I want in my racket. Uh, rocket. You're not going to be the No, no, just a minute. And together we can read poetry in front of the fire. Oh, 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 Ingrid. You're, you're wonderful. Oh. <laughs> I wish there were something more I could do. Yes. <laughs> oh, Dad, uh, where's Bob? Well, oh, you're taking a shower. Can Margaret, I? Margaret, you've got to help me convince Bob that I had nothing to do with this. Well, what, what? I haven't even seen General Tallman yet. I don't know how it got out. What got The out? only thing I can think of is that that sparrow-brained bird watcher went to the newspapers. I... What are you talking about? What am I? Margaret, haven't you seen? Look. Made up as a gag. <laughs> Margaret, believe me. Look, look what it says. You look at the gag. Yeah. This is funny. You had me fooled. Margaret. Mom, Mr. Lair, look. Uh, Holy uh, smoke. <laughs> she gained momentum as she made the round. It's on the level. Of course it is. I'd better show these to Uncle Bob. Well, now while he's in the shower, he'll drown. Margaret, you better have some hot coffee ready for him. Okay, good idea. Come on. <laughs> Oh, Uncle Bob, have you seen the afternoon paper? No, no, I haven't, Chuck. I think you'd better. No, I've got time. It's very important. Oh, Bob, I... Some coffee, Bob? Hi there, Bill. Oh, no, no, thanks, Margaret. Thanks. Hello, Margaret. Hello, Margaret. Hello, Margaret. Hello, Margaret. Hello, Margaret. word for it. I did not put this story in the newspaper. And who did? Nancy Coates, Carol Henning by Olive Sturgis, Ingrid Goode by herself, and Bill Lear by John Archer. This is Bill Baldwin speaking. <laughs>